Hi, good evening. My name is Joanne, Head of Maybank Privilege and Emerging Affluent. Welcome to the Financial Empowerment Series, If Life Was a Canvas webinar, brought to you by Maybank Privilege. Now, if life was a blank piece of canvas, what would yours look like? Will it be filled with splashes of colours depicting a wonderful and colourful life, or will it be full of things that you want to achieve and want to get in life, sunshine and rainbow by the seaside, or if you wish to explore um, the world, what would it be? What can life actually give you that you can paint on your canvas? So with all your great collectibles and what you want to leave behind and the legacy that you want to give to your loved ones, how would this come out in your canvas? Whatever your canvas looks like, we are here to have a conversation on how we can help you make it happen. Now, did you know that uh, there are many financial solutions that can, get, that can help you realize your dreams, no matter which stage of life you're in? So as per our earlier financial empowerment series, it is about getting started with a financial plan. Now, if you haven't, do not fret. Today's conversation is uh, is about making your colorful canvas come alive and by understanding how financial solutions can help you. So, 
Joining me in conversation today is my guest, Inchik Muzni, CEO of Maybank Asset Management. Hi, Muzni. Hey, hi. Hi, hi. Oh, oh. oh. Nope. SOP. SOP. All it's right. Good to see you. Yes. Hi. Thanks sure. for coming. Do have a seat. Thank you for having me here today. Yes. So, Muzni, ever thought, right, if you had a blank canvas, what would yours look like? And how, if you were to be asked to paint your life, so how would your canvas look like? Wow. Thanks, Joanne. Firstly, thanks, Joanne. That is an interesting question indeed. I would like to think that my canvas, based on my life journey up until now, would be colorful. And hopefully, when I do decide to retire, these colors would remain bright and the images clear as they are today and not fade away into some distant memory. Right. So, can, with your canvas looking all colorful, have you ever thought about how much you should have to comfortably make your canvas come true? Well, you're asking me what is the ideal amount to have before retiring, right? Essentially. Well, essentially, how yeah. much do you need to set aside to make it come true? Well, there's no one common answer for everyone on, on this case, you know. To some, having a monthly cash flow of 10,000 ringgit may be a lot, but to others, it could be not enough. Uh, it is not about the amount, but the activities we plan to do once we decide to retire. Now, if you want to maintain the same lifestyle we, that you are enjoying before retirement, then you should target to have a monthly withdrawal between 70 to 80% of your pre-retirement income. Uh, this is called the replacement ratio. Mm -hmm. So if your last drawn income before retirement is around 14,000 ringgit monthly, then you should be able to enjoy more or less the same lifestyle if you're able to withdraw 10,000 ringgit per month from your retirement savings. Now, but in order to draw 10,000 ringgit per month for the next 15 years, that is you're retiring at the age of 60 mm -hmm. and you're gonna live up to 75 years old. Right. All right. You would probably need a retirement savings pool of 1.8 million ringgit now, stash away somewhere, all right? In reality, saving up to 1.8 million ringgit is more difficult than what we think it is, you know. Why? Now, according to EPF, the average accumulated savings by an active member at the age of 54, that magic number of 54, this one year mm -hmm. before you are able to withdraw everything from EPF and decide to retire early. Right, right. Right? At 54, the average saving is only 205,000 ringgit. Oh. Now, that is far from the 1.8 million ringgit goal that we talked about earlier. Meaning, most can probably withdraw only about 1,000 ringgit a month for the next 15 years. Now, even if they were to cut back on the spendings and reduce from that 10,000 ringgit goal a month down to 3,000 ringgit monthly, they would have used up all their savings in less than six years. Hmm. Now, the point I'm trying to get across here, Joanne, to many of us, whatever amount we may have stashed in the EPF, mm -hmm. okay, it may not be enough to continue to provide us with the colorful lifestyle we plan during our retirement days. Now, the goal, I'm not suggesting that everybody should have 1.8 million ringgit stashed away somewhere as a retirement fund. That is impossible and that's not practical. But what is important is we need to take action now mm. to supplement our retirement savings in order to have a comfortable and exciting retirement ahead. I think you got it spot on. Take control, take action now. I mean, it sounds like a lot of money, but you know, this, that's it really. We want our canvas to be full of colors with all the opportunities that life has to yep, offer, true. whether it's for personal growth or anything, right? But in all honesty, if um, I think for our audience, if you don't despair, if it sounds very scary now, the secret to getting to that desired amount is to start by having a financial plan. True. So if we plan it out and actually put our money in the right financial assets, we can achieve that goal after a certain time. So when you talk about getting started with a financial plan, you are really assessing how much do you need and by when. And then you need to know how much you can set aside currently every month for your savings and your investments. Now, and then what you need to do is to actually reassess if you can afford it 
Otherwise, you have to readjust the amount that you want to save or at least the time frame that you need to achieve it. True. So whatever it is, whatever plans you have, it has to be an inspiring one and one that is comfortable enough for you to follow through. Yeah. Now, the good news to all our audience, you can speak to our personal financial advisors at any Maybank branch and they can help you with that. Or you can also check out, I think, uh, on, on our website, maybanktoyou.com.my and you can look at the goal-based investment tab. Uh, right. So have you seen that, Musni? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've played around with it a few times already. Oh, that's, that's good. Uh, and you should also tell your family and friends to actually get started with that if they haven't. So Musni, I, often, I know you often get asked, right? Mm. Um, which are the funds or portfolios should we actually invest in? Wow. Um, meaning how do we invest for retirement, essentially, right? <laughs> now, here I'm going to introduce you to Kase. Um, as we know it, life can be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Important that our retirement investments are geared towards reaching our goals, but also at the same time be flexible enough for cost corrections along the way. Now, when I was a lot younger, well, a lot younger, <laughs> I thought I would work very hard and save up so that I can retire comfortably by the age of 50. Mm. Not 60, but 50. Right. However, two financial crises later, here I am working towards retiring at the age of 60 now. Now, unlike Kase, I did not have the luxury of a retirement investment plan that was flexible enough to provide me with various solutions when facing with major life events. Throughout a life cycle, numerous events are encountered, that's for sure, each requiring different solutions. The ability to switch from growth to moderate strategy, for example, or from accumulation to distribution class, and vice versa, is important to keep us invested. That's the key message. Investors of different segments and life, uh, lifestyle should be able to choose what level of risk to take and mm. have the flexibility to decide on how their retirement planning should fit their mm. goals and needs according to the life cycle. Yeah, I think what you pointed out is really relevant and mm. uh, in the slide earlier we saw of Kase, right? We do go through phases in life as yep. we attain our achievements, be it big or small, and staying invested is truly a good way of growing our money, True. right? So actually for customers who may not have sufficient funds for investments, one of the things that we always say is to inculcate a savings behavior or a savings habit first. Meaning, part of the financial plan is to understand how much we're spending and whether there is enough left for savings, right? So if you feel that you're spending too much, it's time to look at trimming the excesses, Oops. <laughs> right? Maybe cut down Starbucks or something like that. <laughs> yeah, or either that, you know, you need to actually increase your source of income, whether it's a new job or rental income, or maybe through investments, right? So at the end of the day, we should really target at least 20% of our income to be stayed, saved and invested. Mm. So once you have savings, then you can look at the different investments that you spoke about um, and how to diversify our money. Right. Well, yeah, uh, we talk about you know, preparing for the end of life and preparing for retirement. Another aspect of, of, of life is the, life, the creation of life itself. And this is sometimes planned and sometimes <laughs> unplanned. Yeah. I find that it's when it's, that there's more planning that is needed when the little one comes along. Yes, absolutely, you're right. Uh, when little ones come along, uh, as we all know, you will need a, a bigger house or even a bigger car or more cars. And you need to start setting aside money for milk powder or even education plans. Well, you know how much, ex how expensive milk powder can be. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and, and how can the bank help you know, on, on this with customers who don't have enough savings? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you are. So, so first of all, if a customer is actually looking at upgrading or having a bigger house, they can always come to the bank and ask for the mortgage loans. Mm. Um, one of the main things is to remember that you have enough set aside for the down payment uh, and that you can afford the monthly loan repayment thereafter. Okay, right? all right. So the thing that I always uh, um, ad advise customer is to make sure that your loan is also covered either with an MRTA, MRTT, or a level term assurance, or even a life insurance policy, right? Um, I think for now, you can also apply for our home loan, if you want, on m you under our mortgage to you. So wow. it makes it very seamless now. Okay, yeah. that's good. Likewise, if you want a car and you need a car loan, you can come to us. The thing that I'm really passionate about is actually on uh, the Moto Takafu policy, mm. right? So a lot of people do not know that uh, when you buy a Moto Takafu policy, you can actually have add-ons Okay. on the policy 
So you can cover for floods, especially now we see ah, a lot of sure, floods, right? right? Yeah. So you can add your coverage for floods, and you can also, especially for cars that is above five years, mm. you can also add on uh, um, the replacement of new parts, uh, uh, new spare parts, ah. as well as paint the whole car as new. Oh, seriously? Yes. Yes. And okay. and. Um, I, I speak of it because that's exactly what happened to me. Okay. And I'm really glad that I took all that. Um, and you can also take coverage for um, com to compensate you for loss of use. So I, I think there's so much more you can do with those uh, policies. Now, even on uh, even if you don't talk about Moto Takafu, right? One of the things that uh, I always want to tell um, our audience is to make sure that even when you're saving or you're looking at investments, you need to make sure you have sufficient coverage. And, and I mean insurance coverage, right? Uh, in case something happens to the sole breadwinner. Mm. So now that you are a parent, you've got to make sure that in the event something happens, your loved ones are well taken care of. Definitely. So usually we recommend to customers to look at protection plans that can um, um, provide an income replacement in the event of a disability or the demise of the sole breadwinner. And um, for our spouses thereafter, usually you, uh, if something were to happen, then they don't need to pay for the premiums, but there will be an amount left for them uh, at least before they come up with a new plan or what to do. I right? see. Interesting. And usually we say that um, uh, rule of thumb, maybe 10 times your last drawn annual salary, that should be the sum coverage, sum assured or the coverage that you need. Right? Uh, and of course, if you have kids and little ones come along, education plan. So that, so that they can go to the university of choice, right? So, so Musni, what about from a wealth accumulation and a growth perspective, what other factors do you think we should be mindful of uh, when we go through the journey of life towards the achievement of our picture-perfect painting? Well, mindful, that's the key word. What we need to be mindful of is that retirement reality and retirement dream, these are two different things entirely, you know? All of us dream that, you know, first and foremost, we would be able to regularly set aside a portion of our monthly income mm -hmm. towards savings and investment to build that retirement fund. Mm -hmm. You know, you're saying about 20% will put aside and whatnot. That's, that's actually, to most of us, it's just a dream. Yeah. We dream that we would be able to stop working at the age of 60, when oh, yeah. my case was 50. <laughs> Again, we know that was a dream. And the, the, we dream that we would be able to live with the same spending and lifestyle even after retirement. Okay? However, the actual reality is tougher than what we imagine it to be. Low financial literacy among Malaysians means that we do not save enough. Mm. To most of us, EPF, whatever we put in EPF, that represents our one and only retirement savings plan. Right. Sad to say. Even then, our retirement savings are usually not enough, mm -hmm. forcing us to sometimes work beyond the age of 60. Often more than not, you know, then life would throw us with the curveball, the unexpected changes, the events. Life as we know it is not a straight line. No. You know, it's full of uncertainties and, and, and the unexpected diversions which will leave us financially unprepared. Now, um, I'd like to expand on that, and this is not just about my problem or your problem mm -hmm. or our little problem, mm -hmm. this actually is a national issue. Right. A huge portion of Malaysians are without any form of financial protection. Even those with EPF, most do not meet the basic minimum re retirement requirement. Now, here are some statistics which we'd like to share. This is from EPF, of course. 48% or one in every two person rely on EPF savings as their main source of cash flow for retirement. 68% of the contributors do not even meet the basic minimum amount of retirement suggested by EPF, which is 240,000. While 240,000 may sound like a big number to you right now, to me right now, in reality, that is equivalent to a fixed withdrawal of 1,300 ringgit per month every month for the next 15 years. Assuming you're going to retire at 60 and you live up to 75, it's 1,300 ringgit a that's month. Not, that's not a lot, actually. That's not a lot. Yes. And, 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 and alarmingly, 70% of those age 54 and above, people like me who is ready to retire and whatnot, have less than 50,000 oh. in their EPF savings. If they are to withdraw 1,000 ringgit each month, which is not a lot, mm -hmm. to support their retirement expenses, that money 
is enough to last them just over four years before they ran out of money. Why? Okay? So what I'm saying here is that we need to diversify, we need to start to save. Yes. You know, more than what we think we should have. Yeah, it does, it does sound like it. I mean, uh, savings um, and you need to have time for it to compound and you really need to take, take control. So, so are there other things that we need to be yeah. c considering as well? The other thing that we need other to be worried about is that, right. you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we now are living longer, you know, Joanne, you know, the need to supplement our retirement savings is, has become more important, even mm -hmm. more important today as we tend to live longer than our forefathers, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. In general, the Malaysian population is fast aging. People are living longer with birth rates declining. Okay, that's quite important. Uh -huh. This has resulted in the composition of you know, older inhabitants compared to the entire population to be increasing every year. Now, statistics have shown those aged 60 and above represents about 11% of the Malaysian population in 2021, up from 10% three years ago. Not only that, with better standards of living and advancement in medical science, Malaysia's life expectancy too has improved. Okay? In 2021, the average life expectancy in Malaysia is about 75.6 years. So it's, it's getting very longer. precise. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Not only that, cost of living is on the rise. <laughs> you know, living longer translates to a longer period of consumption during old age. Imagine, we, we retire at 60, we, well, from a statistic on average, we have 15 years of mm -hmm. retirement age. Mm -hmm. All right? And the longer we live means the more money is needed to support our retirement lifestyle. Yeah. Unfortunately, cost of living too is, is on the rise and inflation will eat away our purchasing power. So it's not just the cost of nasi lama that's going up. Medical costs are getting higher every single year. And this is mm. especially true for Malaysia, which ranks the highest in ASEAN countries in 2021. Right. Now, I know nobody plans to get sick, but it happens. When an unexpected medical emergency happens, sometimes we have no choice but to utilize our long-term savings. Now, that is fine if you're still working today, you know. We, we use that money, we can still set aside a portion of our future paychecks to replenish our retirement fund. But if an emergency happens during your retirement and you have to dip into your savings, you won't have any large source of income to replenish back those savings. Mm -hmm. So the message is, you know, the best way is one, always to stay protected. You mentioned it earlier. Yep. It's, always, it's important to always stay protected. And two, diversify and supplement your retirement savings. Yes. You know, as you were going through the statistics, right, so I tend to look at it from a glass half full perspective. So that we are, li I mean, the fact that we are living longer, I think it's good news. I've got more time to enjoy life. Definitely. To correct. live out the colourful canvas that I have yep. painted. Add more colours to it. Yes. And uh, I think, I, think uh, I look at it uh, knowing what we know today, right, it just means that we, it is very important for us to really plan our financials out, right? To really plan and have that sort of a, um, savings or that sort of a protection that we need to, to tide us through, especially as we live longer. So um, on the point on um, especially higher medical costs and all that, now I always believe that, uh, and I, again I say it, right? So even if you are taking insurance plans, make sure that you are covered for, um, uh, get a proper medical plan with sufficient coverage because medical bills are getting higher. And make sure you also cover for critical illness because one day when you retire, I don't think the organization that you're working for will continue to pay. So it's very important that we get the right medical plans. True. with critical illness, right? So now, um, I, I, I hear what you have said, right? Um, so from an investment perspective, um, how can we actually prepare better? Because I've been talking a lot about insurance since I'm so passionate about it. So from an investment perspective, well, how do we do that? Exactly. First, we have to start to save. You know, as again, you mentioned, save. Again, and, and I'm going to repeat this over and over again like a broken record. We don't save enough. That's the right. whole key point. And during the pandemic, what, you know, the things that we learned from the pandemic is that during crisis, we don't have enough money to even tide things over. Mm -hmm. Okay? In a recent survey conducted by the Department of Statistics, again, I'm, I love... You're just going to throw all these scary things I, at us. Unfortunately, 
I look at things glass half empty. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Let's okay. hear it. Let's hear it. So, according to the Department of Statistics, during the initial movement control order, the, you know, the early part yes. of the MCO in 2020, the following hard and brutal truth have been revealed at the current for current state of savings, including retirement savings. Mm -hmm. Sixty percent of Malaysian, on average, do not have sufficient financial savings. Fifty percent have stated that they can survive financially if the lockdown is extended for just one more month. Mm -hmm. Only 10% have stated that they can survive if the lockdown is extended to three months. We thought we knew that we should at least save six months to 12 months of our income in case of emergency. Right. But statistics show that none of us are prepared. Mm. Only 10% claim that they can survive three months without an income. Right. Okay? This underscores my earlier point that Malaysia, in general, do not save enough. Again, like a broken I know, record. I hear you. Many rely on EPF contributions as the only source of long-term savings, which, if we are to rely on the statistics provided by EPF just now, is still far from enough. Mm. So I think we, we hear that. It's pretty frightening statistics. I still think that we can plan for it. Yep. And uh, as I understand, right, and this leads me to my next question, Musni, so Maybank Asset Management, I hear that you have launched a new fund and I think uh, um, it's called the Maybank Flexible Retirement Solution. Yes, MFRS. Right? right? So with all these statistics that you have uh, uh, shown to us that we don't have enough savings and the EPF alone probably isn't going to help, especially when you want to have a colourful canvas and you want to live longer to enjoy it. So tell us more okay. on the Maybank Flexible Retirement Solution. <laughs> well, um... The idea about this Maybank Flexi Retirement Solution, it, it's not about trying to get people to you know, withdraw from EPF and put it into our fund. It's not about that. It's all about diversification and supplementing your existing retirement plan. The message I'd like to impart today is that we need to diversify and supplement our retirement savings because what we think we may have is not going to be enough. Mm. The traditional instruments that we know or have, no, you know, have their own set of limitations. Mm -hmm. all right? Savings and term deposit, while provides the liquidity and carries minimal risk, it does nothing to protect your capital against long-term inflation. In other, word, in other words, if you were just to rely on savings and put all your retirement fund into savings, mm. you'll find out after 20 years that your purchasing power has dropped by quite a yes. lot due to inflation. Right. Other investment instruments carry higher risk and mostly are not specifically designed for retirement purposes. I'll come back to that on, on the next few slides. Property and real estate investment is a natural hedge against inflation, which is the best, hmm. but it is illiquid. It is not liquid, number one. Number two, it is not accessible to everyone. Not everybody have half a million bucks or a million bucks to suddenly spl splurge into property today. And, and, and another thing is that property during market downturns, the yield or the rental income that you get may be impacted. Okay, so Maybank, Maybank Asset Management have launched, recently launched a fund mm -hmm. and it's called Maybank Flexi, uh, Flexi uh, Maybank Flexible Retirement Solution. Right. Okay, the strategy for the retirement solution is somewhat different than any other unit trust fund. Mm. Okay, first and foremost, it is a suite of two funds with two investment strategies, growth and moderate. Right. And two return profile, accumulation class or distribution class which is designed to meet the different life stages and the needs of an investor. Our Flexi Retirement Solution is designed to support retirement pu purposes through, number one, downside risk, mm -hmm. you know, where the target investment return you know, with minimum risk volatility and minimum loss. Two, diversification is going to be broad-based. Broad it's going to be unbiased towards any country, sector, themes, or style. Mm. It's simple. Mm -hmm. The target return is trying to meet uh, cash rate and inflation rate, stable investment return, and not about trying to beat any uh, index benchmark. Mm -hmm. And it's all about growing wealth. You know, we have a high conviction asset selection targeting long-term long growth, Joanne. Right. So this fund is really a supplementary fund to what we already have at EPF, and for some of us, maybe even PRS. Correct. So now the question is, uh, with the fund that you have launched, right, are we really looking at a lump sum single investment, or is it going to be like uh, EPF where we contribute regularly towards this fund? Uh, okay, all right. That, that, that is an interesting question. 
in reality, there is no hard and fast rule to this, and it is all about how much one can afford to put aside to invest, and how much you want to have at the end of it, right? right? But I would suggest both. Okay. Now, let me just try to illustrate to you. If you invest lump sum amount of 10,000 ringgit at a constant 7% return, and that return is reinvested every single year, your money will grow to almost double to 20,000 ringgit after, after 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, if you to continue beyond 10 years and add another 10 years, that money will then double again from 20,000 ringgit to 40,000 ringgit. So after 20 years, you put 10,000, you'll get 40,000 ringgit at 7% right. return. Now, in order to get 400,000 ringgit, means you have to put 100,000 ringgit yes. and let it compound yep. over 20 years. Now, with the same return, if you were to invest 10,000 ringgit every year for the next 20 years, so every year you just put in 10,000 uh, 10, ringgit, your money would have grown to 440,000 ringgit by the end of the 20th year. So one illustration have 100,000 ringgit, uh -huh. lump sum, right. the other is 10,000 ringgit and do it regularly for the next 20 right. years. You'll reach to this end, about, about the, the, the same conclusion. Right. But it's about your affordability and your end target, what yeah. you want. So what I hear you correctly, both. Both. Lump sum and regularly reinvest. Right? Correct. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, headline news, as you know, right? Uh, with recent inflationary concerns and the Ukraine-Russian war. So, uh, markets have been volatile. It has so, been. So, in this regard, when it comes to this uh, flexible retirement solution, uh, should it should they go in now? Should it affect their retirement plans? You know, or should uh, they wait? Well... Well, Joanne, investing for retirement, as, as, as namesake, it's, it's about long-term investment. It's not right. about investing now to get the benefit three years down the road. Correct. Okay? When it comes to long-term investment, I only have one philosophy, which is the best time to invest was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and the second best time is now. Okay? So market corrections, if anything, provides the best time to dollar cost average. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it is about your time in the market and not about timing the market, okay? Right. So I think it's, it's actually a good thing that we now have more options for our customers, sure. given all the statistics that you have shown, right? I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the key is really about making sure you know how much you need, right? Setting that plan and then setting aside something that you can afford. And then when it comes to this retirement solution, it will supplement what you already have. Correct. And you should look at putting lump sum amount and regularly invest thereafter. And you should start now. Don't try to time the market. It's timing in the market that matters more. Now, you also got me thinking because uh, when we talk about retirement, we also look at um, um, what happens after that, right? Yeah. So, say you enjoy your retirement, but there is also a time where you will have to end. Um, and you want to leave a le legacy behind, right? So that got me also thinking about uh, some of the legacy plans, mm -hmm. uh, it's insurance legacy plans that we also offer. So what this essentially does is um, you can pay a certain premium. So for example, 250000 over five years or something. So the total premium you're paying is about 250000 but you can get at least uh, four to six times the sum coverage Right, that you can leave to your loved ones. So in this example, say after uh, 250,000, whether you invest it over 10 years or, or, or five years, uh, pay the premium, not invest, um, you can leave 1 million for your loved ones when uh, you're not around. Mm. So this means if you plan to leave 1 million for your loved ones, you don't actually need to set aside 1, 1 million, million ringgit. right? Absolutely. So if you buy into this plan, you can set aside maybe 250,000, and the 750000 you can look at investing it or maybe putting it in the retirement fund, right? Correct, or maybe correct. just going for holidays, yep, right? Yep. So I think this, uh, a lot of people do not know about this. So this is something that the bank also offer. Uh, one of the financial solutions that we have, it's called either Smart Wealth or Smart Waris, which is the Islamic version of it. Hmm. And I think, um, you know, as we plan, we should also look at this aspect of it. 
So, so basically, I think for, for um, all our customers, right, when we talk about our financial plan, uh, I get really passionate. I wish I can talk a lot more, but um, I, I just want to highlight just a couple of points for our customers okay. to consider, right? Um, Maybank, we have all the solutions that can help you, whether you want something for liquidity needs or whether it is uh, for protection, True. whether it's for wealth management, we do offer quite a, a lot of uh, funds for our customers and we do have other investment uh, asset classes that we can provide to our customers as mm. part of their whole financial plan. So legacy planning or even when you want to write a, a, a will, right? Mm. you can also come to us. So in the end, what we want our audience to achieve is financial independence or True. retirement. Right? And financial independence can happen any age. Right? It doesn't mean that you have to wait until 60. Yeah. Right? Uh, like you, I also hope to retire by 50. Right? So, um, so from that perspective, uh, you know, we have all the tools. So do come and talk to us because we have the solutions. Whatever your canvas look like, we can make it come true. Uh, we have also launched, uh, I think last year, um, Islamic Wealth Management Solutions. Yeah, so for our customers it. who are seeking Sharia solutions, uh, this is also something that we can help our customers with, right? And if all of what we have discussed uh, either sounds scary <laughs> or confusing, right? You can come and talk to any of our personal financial advisors at any uh, of our Maybank branches that is near to you or convenient to you, right? So now in the interest of time, um, I actually wanted to see if we have uh, any questions from our audience. Um, yes, we do have some questions, so maybe we can take, um, uh, sure. take, take some of the questions. So there is a question uh, that has been submitted. Thank you for your questions. Um, it says that um, I need 15 years to retire, right? I have two kids, one's 15 and the other's age one. Right, and they are planning on a third baby next mm. year in 2023. Congratulations! Yes, that's good planning. So, how much is my earning, or how much should my earning increase? Right, I have uh, two condo commitments. I have paid for a car and also insurance. So, I think the question here is is um, how much should my earnings increase? Mm. Right. So, I think maybe I'll have a step at it. Sure. Right. Yeah. Please. I'll so jump in whenever I can. Okay. So I think um, um, because without having more information, what we do know is that you have children. So as I mentioned earlier, right, uh, your insurance plan, do review it, right? Does it actually provide uh, sufficient coverage, right? Mm. Uh, did you buy that before or after you had your children? Um, and, and make sure that uh, you have something that covers, like I mentioned, the ballpark number, say about... 10 times your, your last run annual salary, right? And you have to review that if that is yep. sufficient. Make sure there's education plans. Now, if your commitments are going up, as clearly, you know, you're planning for children, uh, so you got to have a higher, um, I would say, you will probably need to either have higher income or the money that you have needs to be invested so you can actually um, grow it and hopefully get a return that beats inflation. Sure, right? definitely. Yep. Yeah, so... Yes, I think the answer is, um, yeah, you need to because you have your condo commitment and now you have your children's uh, and uh, the third commitment baby coming. and yeah. the third baby coming. Milk powder. So, yes, so the, the answer is, is yes. And how much? You might want to speak to our personal financial advisors. I think they can work it out yep, for you once they have a conversation you. with you, mm. right? So maybe the next question. Um, inflation. Inflation is at historical high. Now, how do we prepare for retirement? What if we have saved uh, already when retired is still not enough. Exactly my point. It <laughs> will never be enough. Mm. Now, the, the thing about retirement or retirement planning, it's not about setting a number. It's not about that 1.8 million or 2.4 million, mm. whatever millions that you think you should have. Mm. It's reverse calculation. Mm. It's about what do you want to do after retiring? Yes. Okay. So you just picture yourself at the age of 60, for example, and what are you going to do? You want to stay home and be a hermit, or you want to enjoy life and go to travel, this and that, and all. set aside some money for, of course, medical expenses and whatnot. Work out that number if I were to live my life at the age of 60 as if it is today, mm. right? You have your commitments and, and so on and so forth. Work out to that number, you know, average it for one year, you know, and, and then multiply it by. 20 years or mm. 20 times, mm. you know, annually times 20 times. 
then you'll get to that magical number that you need to save. And everybody will be different. Yes. If you decide to stay in a kampong and live looking at the paddy field every day, which is a great life to me, mm. all right? You don't need 1.8 million, perhaps. Mm. Maybe it's mm. a bit le lesser than that. But if you plan to retire overseas, for example, and you have, you know, maybe a, a, state, you know, a, a condominium in, in London, for example, definitely you have to have more. Yes. Okay? So inflation, that's one more thing. When you invest in something, you just look at that. I, I'm giving you a number just now, and that number divide by whatever. It could be 180 for 15 years or 240 for 20 years. Mm. That number, what you need to invest is actually in something that beats inflation. Correct. All right? So if you're predicting inflation to be about 5 to 6% over the 20-year period, <laughs> make sure the return is 5 to 6% or more during that period. So that at least your 10,000 ringgit a month that you're planning to withdraw, the purchasing power is the same 20 years down the road. You can, you can buy the same thing 20 years down the road because it has taken care into inflation yes. over the years compounded over 20 years. So that's the idea. Look back at what you want to do, how much it takes for you to spend on a monthly, on a monthly uh, basis, multiple that by 12, multiple that by 20 or whatever number of years that you think. Yes. All right? And then invest in, in, in something that beats inflation, if not at par with inflation. All right? So that's, that's the magic formula, actually. And when you invest, you should diversify and not put yeah, all, not your pull all your eggs in one basket. In one basket. Okay. Yes. And, and if I can add a bit sure. on FRS, why it's called F or flexible is that we do know that you will, you will have some money stashed in EPF. You probably have some money stashed in PRS. And you probably have some money stashed in property, real investment, mm. you know, and everything else. We're saying that you know, don't take that money away. Use this. Supplement that with this. Add to this. Why? Because of all the other uh, asset classes, this is flexible in the sense that if an emergency do happens along the way, you're able to withdraw this money mm -hmm. okay, without any penalty. Whereas in EPF, you can't simply just hey, withdraw the money or PRS for that matter or property for that matter. You can simply just say, I'm going to put up this property for sale because I need the money tomorrow. You can't do that. Yeah. But with Maybank flexi Flexible Retirement Solution, that is what flexible is all about. Right. That if you do need to dip into your emergency saving, this is where you can take your money from. I think that's good. At least it, you can take control of uh, exactly. your, your re retirement plans, right? So I think that's good. Uh, we have another question. Uh, I think this one is very broad. It says, Malaysians also have high household debt. Now, how do we plan for those? <laughs> Well, I think, Joanne, you mentioned quite uh, you know, <laughs> aptly just now that you have to look on all your commitments and you have to look yes. back at all and your income yes. and, and try to balance both. You know? yeah. The challenge, as I clearly said earlier, is that financial literacy in Malaysia is not at, at, mm. at its best. All right? we, we sometimes tend, tend to spend more than what we make, which results in unnecessary consumer debt. And that's where the household debt goes up. It's, it's nothing wrong with borrowing. You know, I, I work for a bank. I, you know, I have to advocate borrowing is good, but consumption borrowing is something that you mm. need to think twice. You know, do, do I want to borrow to consume? Mm. Okay? And, and then if you're able to pay on the next salary or the next two salaries, great. But don't borrow to consume and leave the credit card bill unpaid. Yes. Okay? That's where it's dangerous. Yes, okay. I, I, I agree. And uh, if there is a lot of debt, we should also be working towards um, a form of uh, paring down your debts, right? Restructuring loan. Talk to the yes. PSAs and they'll be able to tell how to restructure those loans into yes. a bit more meaningful. I mean, the worst of all is paying the 18% interest on your credit card debt. You can always get <laughs> some form of restructuring to a lower, lower rate yes. than credit card debt, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we have another question. It's, uh, I, okay, so the question is, I have saved some retirement funds, okay, but the sum is affected due to recent market events, so what can I do? And uh, um, the, the author is, is also retired. Re retired, okay. Yeah. So this is a tough one. So because you, you are retired, and therefore, whatever cash amount that you have, um, you, you cannot easily supplement it or, or replenish that with new yeah. source of income. And, and therefore, with the current crisis the other day, it has taken a toll on your savings. Mm. Now, clearly, there's only one other choice left, is that trying to find a new source of income, trying to be creative on what skills do you have 
that you can put out there to mm. earn some more money, maybe mm. on a part-time basis. You, know, you can do, I'm not sure, I mean, some people can turn hobbies into money. Yes. Okay? If you're good in one hobby, if you're passionate in one hobby, you can turn that into an income generating activity mm. by advising, for example, mm. you know, by, by getting people to, 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 you know, to come to you and, and you teach them how to do it. Mm. Okay? Or create a club and, and, and the likes of those. You know? yes. So I've seen people who have turned, successfully turned hobbies you know, during their retirement age into income generating you know, activities. Classic example, assuming that you like to travel when you are, you, you know, before you retire and you have knowledge about certain you know, places to go. Like, I, mean, I, I travel to Japan quite a lot. I know, you know where to go in Japan in all those small villages. Now that I've retired, I can always say, hey, I'm going to plan a trip to Japan next year going to this itinerary. Anybody wants to follow me? And these are the costs. And of course, I will add some commission to that. All right? right. Pay for the tickets you know, and, and everything else. So essentially, that is a hobby which you have turned to become an income generating activity. You enjoy doing it and you get like many people who enjoy to tag along with you and at the same time make money. Yeah. That's, All right. that's, that, that's, that's one, one of the many solutions. That's one of the solutions, yeah. The other yeah. would be to also review your portfolio. Exactly. If you have to, right? If, if you and, have, then you look, maybe you want to look at something that is more... Uh, okay. they will, maybe you, the yield is, is not working for you. Yes. All right. Yeah. This is where you so need to talk to the, uh, the, the, the financial advisors. advisors. Yeah, and they can come out. So it's either you, know, you, you hang on to it or you may want to switch to other funds that will be generating True. a slightly better return, right? Uh, so there's always a solution. There is always a solution. Yeah. <laughs> it's about not keeping it to yourself. Mm. Go and call your, 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 yeah. your financial advisors and... And, yes. and explore what are the options exactly. that's actually available. Exactly. Right? Um, so, um, what about this other question? Can the new retirement products, so I'm guessing that's the one you, you were talking about, um, the new flexible retirement solution be withdrawn in case of emergencies? And a lot of retirement plans are very restrictive. The short answer is yes. Uh, that is what this uh, flexible retirement solution is all about. Because we're not competing with EPF, we're not competing with PRS. We're saying that this is another pot of money where you can invest in. It aims towards retirement. The investment objective is towards retirement, meaning it's conservative, it's stable and whatnot, but just in case there are emergencies. Mm. We do know that people do face emergencies because Life again, unpredictable. Unpredictable. Yeah. And this is where you can dip into the fund and withdraw. Mm. There's no penalty right. if you were to withdraw. But again, you know, if the amount needed is small, maybe the, the, the advisor will say switch from growth strategy to moderate strategy with distribution oh. class so you can get distribution coming out of the funds oh. rather than withdraw everything. Okay? So there are many ways of doing it, but short answer to your question. Yes, you can withdraw. So you can actually still switch, like if you took the, uh, the moderate fund, you can actually switch it to the growth fund. And vice versa. Oh, You can so switch without any sense. switching fee. So oh. it's, it's a cross. You can switch from, for example, like Kasi just now, you know, the, the video. Uh, in Kasi, the early stage, yes. you know, maybe she wants to go more on aggressive because she right. feels that I'm young, I need to take on more risk, I want the money to grow. But then eventually she lost a job or she changes the job mm. and she says, wait, wait a second, I need some income to come back to pay for my insurance premium. I don't have any other income. So she will switch from gr uh, aggressive from growth to moderate with distribution class. So that on a yearly basis, there will be dividend coming out right. for her to use that money to pay for her insurance and stay protected. Okay? So there are various ways that you can twist and turn and, and combine it to make it work for you. Oh, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's all really the flexible. All about. So, you, so when coming out with the fund, I'm sure we have thought about all the needs of uh, people when they want to set aside funds for retirement exactly. without it being totally inaccessible. That means exactly. you can still that's... look at it, you can still change your mind and maybe yes, change it into a different strategy. I think exactly, that's, exactly. That's, that's the whole point. Yeah, I, sh I, I, will, be, I will be looking into that. But to, to the next question. Um, uh, as an employee, most of my savings are in EPF. So, should I just keep it there or should I withdraw for my expenses during my retirement? Uh, um, any better suggestions? Well, yeah. I mean, any employee would have their savings in EPF. That's given. And chances are the bulk of your retirement savings are with EPF, okay? which is great. 
Uh, and if you have extra cash, this is where we say supplement it with other forms of uh, retirement savings. And MFRS is one of them. Mm. Okay? And, and once you retire, the idea here is that two options. If you're happy with the returns that EPF is providing you, which is approximately between 5 to 6%, then mm. keep the money there mm. and, and, and withdraw for your expenses as and when needed. Mm. Don't try to take everything out and <laughs> enjoy life and suddenly realize, oops, yeah. three years down the road, you don't have anything. But if you're not happy with that return, meaning it's insufficient to meet your expenses, then you may want to take some of it and invest into something that provides a high return to meet your expenses. Mm. So those are the options that you can think of. That, but my suggestion is, not knowing all the details, you should, again, call up our yeah. financial advisors and reveal to them, you know, disclose to them what exactly your position is, and they'll give you, a, I think, a, a fairly good advice on that. Yeah, I think it, no matter what, uh, uh, what age, right, you should always stay invested, yep. and uh, we should always look at diversifying our portfolio. So as you, uh, maybe you're well into retirement, you don't need that money you know, yet, right? Uh, you could keep the money in certain investments, but maybe not in such um, high-risk exactly. portfolios, right? Yep. Uh, you should uh, should find something that matches our... Yeah, our maybe not, maybe not cryptocurrency at that um, age. No, <laughs> don't, don't. I think it will be too, too, risky. Um, too risky, too too volatile. So um, I think this question is interesting and quite a lot of our audience uh, also have that in mind. Should I be investing now when market is so uncertain? and? What should I invest in? And should I invest every month? Yep, yep. I, 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 I get it, this a lot. And, and yes. you know, over 30 years of being in this industry, I, again, have faced minimum two financial crises. In 1998, the Asian financial crisis, and in 2008, the global financial crisis, Lehman Brothers, you know, collapse, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Every single time there's a crisis, the market corrects, it drops. To me, that presents the best opportunity to buy. Of course, everybody will be so scared and, and everybody will think, shall I put money when the market is, is, is at that level? You know, philosophy is very simple. When you invest, you invest when, you invest when everyone is fearful and you divest when everyone is greedy. So see market correction and market uncertainty as an opportunity for you to partake into the market mm. at a cheaper valuation. Now, again, if you feel that mm, that's too iffy, that's too risky, then do dollar cost averaging. Don't put lump sum everything. Maybe mm. do it monthly over a staggered period of, say, 12 months. Okay? Yeah. But do it consistently. So you don't really time the market. You get it, you know, an average of, of what it is. Okay? But the best bet is to do regular savings. Regular savings. Okay, you know, it could be a little, it could be just a thousand ringgit a month, it doesn't matter, but do it every single month. Set aside every single month, no matter how small, but do it regularly. Right, I think that's good advice. Now, there's another, another question on MFRS. Uh, is the product capital guaranteed? Uh, what's the return? Um, well, first and foremost, the product is not capital guaranteed. It has a capital preservation strategy, meaning mm. when we invest, we don't necessarily invest in risky stocks or risky asset. We look at those that give stable, maybe not sexy, not high return, but stable return. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's one. Uh, so it's not capital guaranteed. It's, right. The only thing capital guaranteed in here is probably your EPF um, amount that is guaranteed by the government, but the rest are not. When it comes to return, we plan or we target a return between six to eight percent. Six for the moderate fund and eight percent for the growth fund. And again, this is a target that we, we, we set ourselves that we want to achieve every single year. Okay? Right. And uh, we have uh, the next question, and I think this is probably the, the last question that we have time for. So as a Muslim, can I have an end-to-end -end service by Maybank that is Sharia compliant? Uh, don't want to say for my retirement that it's not Sharia compliant. So before you take that question, I just want to say from um, uh, at, at Maybank, um, especially since after we launched uh, Islamic Wealth Management, Management exactly. we do have end-to-end -end financial solutions that are Sharia compliant. Uh, everything from uh, um, opening of your basic uh, current accounts to financing uh, to even protection plans, takafu plans, and yep. even investments. 
and uh, even Wasiat or exactly or all of that. We have the end-to-end -end solutions, including credit cards. Yep. Even our May app is is Sharia compliant. So, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, but but maybe uh, on the retirement fund that you spoke about, uh, right? it is Sharia compliant. So it is so Sharia compliant. It is Sharia compliant. So you're right, Joanne. At Maybank under Islamic Wealth Management, it's all covered. All covered. All covered. Yeah. And now the retirement planning or the retirement uh, fund is also Sharia compliant. That's good. So, so I think um, I, I, I wish I can continue answering yeah. questions and talking it's to you. It's been fun. Uh, but I'm do, I, I am mindful of the time. So to all our audience, if you've missed any of our previous videos, right, uh, do look out for the financial planning series and the financial empowerment series on YouTube. Uh, you just need to search for um, hashtag Maybank Privilege. Right? You will find a lot of information uh, um, in more depth about what we spoke about today. Uh, or you can log on to Maybank, uh, uh, Maybank's website, which is www.maybanktu.com.my to actually get started on your financial planning journey, right? If you need any help, make an appointment. Also on Maybank to you, uh, we, you can go to EZQ, uh, make an appointment and get a free consultation with any of our personal financial advisors at the branch nearest to you. So, Musni, very soon, it's going to be the month of uh, Ramadan. Yep, we're going to start fasting from Sunday, I believe, 3rd of April. Wow, and, uh, and I, I'm also guessing there's going to be quite a lot of shopping that needs Definitely, to be done. Definitely, every single year. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do shop, don't forget to use the Maybank credit cards. I think there's a lot of promotion. There's one that we are running now where we are, um, you can actually get a, um, a chance at winning a car. Wow. So make sure you shop with your, car, uh, with your Maybank credit card. Who I knows? do want a new car. <laughs> yes, you may get one just for Raya, right? So for our audience, um, in collaboration with uh, Islamic Wealth Management, uh, Maybank Privilege will be having a weekly Tazkira Ramadan. And this is also in conjunction with the new campaign that we are launching, the 360 Degree Wealth Campaign. So this campaign aims to empower you uh, with uh, a wealth positioning and a holistic portfolio building. And we have a wide range of solutions from wealth creation to accumulation, which will give you uh, solutions that, uh, that um, will, help you, um, will help you actually gain what you need to achieve at the end, right? So um, what we want to do also goes beyond monetary benefits. And uh, in conjunction with the event, uh, do join us on the 13th, on the 20th, and also 27th of April, from 12.30 to 1 p.m. and let us guide you through this spiritual journey where we care for you beyond tangible returns, right? Well, that's good, that's good. I'll put it in my diary. Yes. Mm. So I think that's, um, that's all we have time for today. Uh, so to all our audience, uh, please scan the QR code to answer the survey and stand a chance to win Starbucks voucher, Starbucks. wasn't it? Yay. Yeah, when you engage with our personal financial advisors. So it's been a really wonderful talking to you, uh, Musni. Likewise, I've yes. enjoyed it. And evening. I hope uh, everyone who tuned in and who dialed in also enjoyed and found some of the information that we discussed to be really informational. Uh, ultimately, what we want is for you to get started on your financial plan. And if any of this material is confusing, talk to our personal financial advisor. for that matter. Or scary, yeah. <laughs> Talk to our personal financial uh, advisors at any Maybank branch near you. Or you can also uh, log on to our Maybank website, which is www.maybanktoyou.com.my. So um, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining us. Uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe, especially when you start traveling. Thank you, Joanne. Thank yes. you for inviting me over. Thank you, Muzni. All it right. was fun.